Hey guys, what's up? Welcome back to another video. And today we're going to talk about the three steps to automating your business. So for a long time now, I've been automating as much as possible using various different softwares and getting a lot of good results from it. A lot of the times you're trying to save on human resources costs, you're trying to improve accuracy, you're trying to get a lot more done in a lot less time. And the best way to do that is automations. So if this sounds scary and you're thinking automations, oh, you know, I can't do that. I'm not a coder or I'm not this or that. Don't worry, I'm not either, but I am, I've become good at these like no code platforms. And all you need to understand is the logic. And if you're running a business or you want to get into a business and you want to get into automations, you really probably are thinking about the logic. You're seeing it as it unfolds under, like in front of you. You're looking at a problem within your email inbox and that is now becoming a problem because you can't get those emails saved to Google Drive. And, you know, you start thinking, OK, but now I've got these two apps. I wish there was a way to connect them. Well, there is. There's loads and loads of loads of tools online. And today I'm not really going to go into the tools, but I'm going to give you the process that you can do to think about these things within your business and hopefully start implementing them and then hopefully get some gains on it. Okay, so step one in this three-step process is assessing the automation needs within your business. So this can be thinking about your business holistically and breaking it down and starting to decompose it and just putting it into little segments and just thinking about, okay, what's costing a lot of money? What's taking a lot of time? Those are your big ones that you can start to think about to help you categorize it. And you want to start going and be like, okay, hmm. Let's analyze this thing. It's costing me a lot of money. How can I get that down? Why is it costing a lot of money? Okay, it's usually going to be because it's taking someone a lot of time, but it also could be a service that you're already paying for that you could do yourself. That's uh, something that you can automate. Um, a lot of tools and more sophisticated pieces of software are making those uh, automation is possible. I'm just going to give you a example, for instance, like uh, uploading uh, bank statements into a accounting system. And once it's going, it just goes and goes and goes. And that's one less thing to do on your to-do list every single day. So that's something that you can do that's very quick and it can save you time. And it is a money saver because you know you don't have to pay someone else to do it. And it's taking... So it's saving you money and it's saving someone else's time. So that person now has more time to do something else. So that's the first part of the process to really get to understand where you can implement these. And it's important to focus in on it because if you go in and you try automate everything in the first day, you're probably going to get lost and get a bit disheartened. Right. So step number two is choosing the right tools for the job. This is where it gets dangerously fun uh, because you want to go and explore all these different apps, things like WeWeb, Zapier, Make, all different things, and you want to get into them and, and try understand them and then try see if they fit the purpose. It can be a very slippery slope, uh, but you do have to try keep it focused and try get as much done in that time frame that you're spending looking at it to make it obviously worthwhile, but to also to make sure the tool's going to work and what tools you're going to need because we're going to need this information for the step number three. So when you are doing this, uh, there's a lot and a lot of uh, different options online. I would definitely make sure to just try a few. Luckily, um, for my businesses, I found that Make works well and you can pretty much do anything with it. And then a lot of the tools that I'm already using have different ways to automate them between different software. So I use those and that's going to be your starting block. So you can have those little first baseline tools and then hopefully you can use those tools for other automations. And that brings me to step number three, which is your cost analysis and your return on investment. So I know you're already, you've already been thinking about your return on investment in the first phase because you probably wouldn't be wanting to inv automate this if you didn't see that there was a possibility of getting a decent return. Either that's probably time or money are going to be your, your main factors. So you've probably been thinking about those and now you want to start incorporating it. So what you need to do now is assess what you found in step number two, like how much is the software is going to cost me? Uh, how much is it going to cost to implement it? Because remember, you want to do the quickest implementation without disrupting your workflow with at obviously the lowest price to get the best result. And, you know, you need to weigh up these things. So it 
it becomes challenging because you go, oh, yeah, I can use this automation tool. It's a bit cheaper, but I'm going to have to hire someone at $100 an hour to come sort it out. Or I could use this one, which is a lot more expensive, but it's got like you just click the buttons and it's done. And, you know, there's someone to go to to complain if it breaks. Uh, but now it's a subscription and you're paying for that every month. But that could still be a heck of a lot cheaper than what you're already doing within your business. And it could obviously be more accurate and so on and so forth. So it becomes a difficult process, but it's worth it. Because obviously once you get the automations going, your mind can shift on to something else. It's not something repetitive. And obviously if you're doing repetitive stuff in your day to day, it it's it's not worth it. You know, you you need to spend time growing. You need to obviously spend less money <laughs> on people uh where possible, which means you can obviously automate as much as possible and make it as easy for you to spend time on growing the business and developing and coming up with ideas and obviously this helps a lot, especially on the small business side, because you don't have a lot of resources. However, though, on the big business side, it's also very, 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 very beneficial because you have specific high volume recurring tasks, which are very good for automating. Um, a lot of businesses come to me and they say, oh, you know, I've been doing this. And sometimes it's literally the simplest, simplest, simplest automation that can now save them hundreds of hours. You know, person A does this and then sends it to person B and then person B sends it to person C and then it gets checked and automated. Like that's something that can be just easily automated. Or, uh, you know, previously we spoke about like Zoho Sign and using something that that within an organization that's doing manual documents and signing manual documents. And now you can essentially automate that entire process. And that's not just, you know, that's automating the foundation of their business. So anyway, that's my three steps that I take when I'm looking at automating, whether it's my businesses or any of the businesses that I'm consulting on. And I've found it very, very, very useful, especially just to that that first step. Uh, I sometimes just get jumped into second step where I'm just like looking at the, the softwares. But that first step is really, really important to just list it down. What's my objective? What do I want to get out of it? My return on investment? Am I going to spend, you know, a thousand dollars preparing and and, and conceptualizing and getting all the softwares and spending the time on this, uh, it's, it's got to be worth it, you know, at the end of the day. It's got to be something that can just run in perpetuity. It's going to do its job. And that is now an automated process. So guys, if you are interested in automations, check out like make.com. It's a great place to start. Uh, there's a bunch of other automation tools online. You can ask chat GPT, how's the, you know, what tools are good for automating and just Play around with it. Get a get a get a get a start on it. Try and find something small that you can automate first, and then hopefully that will be a, uh, a door opener to the rest of your business uh, automations. Anyway, guys, I'm Andy. I do business tips and tricks to help you grow your business. So if you like this video, make sure to like and subscribe. I'll see you in another one.